Servus, greetings and hello, welcome to part 3 of the Let's Make the Jungle Terrain tutorial. As you can see, it is about painting and I decided to use my airbrush for the paint job. It is a really fast way and you won't use as much color as you will uh, use when you make it with a normal brush. And if you have an airbrush and never use it for terrain, it's really good. I decided to go for white because uh, it is easier to apply the colors and using less color and you get um, the true colors. It do not darken your colors. And the stone is just a light gray. It's simple artist acrylic color, which I watered down, mixed white and black to get a really straightforward gray tone. For the soil, I use this sandy sandstone um, brownish tone and yeah it is uh, a tinting color which you use um, for coloring uh, your wall paints and once again it is uh, really nice to work with it when you thin it down with water and you have an airbrush with a big nozzle it works really really good um, one of the Pro points, one of the reasons why I wanted to test the airbrush for terrain painting is that you can make really nice color transitions. You can bring up the color really smooth from the soil, from the ground to the gray of the relief columns and the rocks. So it's really nice to merge these parts together and to give the color, the, the rocks the, and the columns and the ruin structures the color of the soil so it so that it looks like it came together and another part is that you can make really nice dark and uh, brighter areas so i decided to make a, a little bit um, brighter grayish tone which is with more white in it and so i can uh, give it the first layered highlight and this brings really a lot of dips into your uh, terrain, which is nearly impossible to do with a brush. Now I reworked some areas with a uh, ochre, with a sandy tone, and uh, try to improve this transition, this color transition between the the grayish rock and the soil of the base. And the next step will be uh, working with traditional painting with uh, paint brushes and uh, it's gonna be about uh, washing and giving the the piece a little bit more more depth for this i use uh, the tinting colors which you can buy in your local craft store i uh, think they work pretty nice and i just use simple water uh, to to dilute them uh, a brush which uh, with a big reservoir is uh, nice for this washing techniques because you can uh, bring up really easy the, the the watered down paints for the rocks and for the for the ruined uh, relief columns i used um, the same color which i used this sandy tone which i use for the base just to uh, bring in a little bit more of this sandy color to the um, to the to the stone elements because the stones come from the soil and so it merges everything more natural together. The next step is uh, to give it a dry dry brush. There are obviously two ways of dry brushing. You can uh, make it really dry with only a minimum amount of paint in your brush, and you can use more paint. This is just a minimum amount to give it a yeah to x to to give the corners more accent and to give it just a highlight the next step is uh, we will go back to the base because um, i use this brownish tone to give it a wash and to um, accent to aid the the deeper areas and now i go over it with a rough dry brush with a sandy tone just to uh, lighten it up and to give it a little bit more of the original sandstone color. Next step is uh, again the same, 
doing it with white and a really dry dry brush and to accentuate uh, the highlights of the soil and to give it a little bit more depth. Before I finish the paint job, I uh, will continue with uh, planting and uh, gluing on the flock and the vegetation because uh, if you make the detail painting, you don't have to make it on the spots where you will later on glue your static grass or your flock or your plastic plants. So the next video part four will, about, will be about the planting and the fine detail painting. So stay tuned and uh, if you like it, link, like and share. Enjoy. Bye.